Welcome everybody, good morning. Today, Ian Bennett is going to talk with us about mobility aids and um, from his own personal experience and other things. And so I will hand over to Ian and say, hello, Ian. Yeah, hello everyone. Um, most of you know me. I've uh, been a member of a group since um, I think about 2003 and done the whole HSP journey. When I, when I joined the group, I was pretty mobile um, and fast forward to today and I'm sat here in a wheelchair, but I, I can still walk a few steps. Um, I try and walk a little bit every day. As I go through this presentation, please, and I think I mentioned it during the presentation, but but please don't think for one moment that I'm saying stop walking and use a mobility aid. Um, I'm the biggest believer in use it or lose it. Um, but some of these gadgets can really help you and improve your life as well. Uh, but we'll talk about that as we go along. Um, the other thing I'd like to say is I'm, I'm not a dealer. I'm not representing any manufacturer. Everything I talk about has just come from my own experiences and, um, and people I've met both through the HSP group uh, and another disabled charity I'm involved with uh, where I meet all sorts of disabilities. And I've, I've learned so much from from guys with spinal injuries and and you know and all sorts of other disabilities as well. Um, so, yeah, thank you, Adam, for asking me to talk on mobility aids. And I just wanted to, you know, that little heading there, getting it right can be life changing. Again, we'll address that. I've also put the the logo in, which I like, which we designed several years ago, simply because it shows mobility aids. Right, do I need an, a mobility aid? Um, this largely depends where you are in your HSP journey, your current level of mobility and your in individual requirements. Uh, I'll try and cover some of the options that may be of interest to you in this presentation. And even if they aren't re required now, it can be very useful to have some awareness of equipment that may be, may be available for your future needs. As I've just said, I'm not a specialist and I'm not involved with any of the suppliers who I might highlight today. My knowledge has all come from my own experiences and from what I've learned from other HSP members and other friends of mine. If you've recently been diagnosed with HSP, you may well not be ready for an aid right now, but of course, in time, this may well change due to the progressive characteristics of most HSPs. And hopefully you'll be interested in discovering what may be available for your possible um, mobility requirements that you come across in the future. We are, of course, all different. Um, uh, Adam will probably correct me, but I think there's about 80 different types of HSP known already, and they all have slightly different symptoms, resulting in a, resulting in a variety of mobility aid requirements. There's a large selection of choices to make with selecting a mobility aid, and I'll try and cover most of the options I've experienced and witnessed during my time as a member of the group. And importantly, I'd also like to touch on the psychological side of using a mobility aid. Uh, denial and pride or fear of giving in are common hurdles that, 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 that I've been guilty of myself and I've witnessed a lot. Um, if anybody, um, Adam, you're on mute now. Um, what, what are we going to do about questions, Adam? Um, I think what we'll try and do is pick up questions at the end. If you've got any questions as we're going through, then pop them in the chat pane and uh, we can either pick them up as we go along or deal with them all at the end. So please use the chat pane for your questions. So when's the right time uh, to consider using a mobility aid? Uh, it's a tricky question to answer because, of course, we're all very different. For me, it was when mobility starts becoming a struggle rather than a pleasure. As I said earlier, please don't think I'm suggesting that you should forget about trying to walk and, and start using a mobility aid. Instead, as I said, I'm a huge believer in use it or lose it. Although I use a wheelchair 90% of the time, I still ensure I do some walking every day and I know how important this is. And I'm glad that we were a little bit late starting this presentation because at 10 o'clock, Alexa actually reminded me to get up and have a walk. <laughs> it would have been funny if you'd heard that, but um, 
Yeah. Uh, denial and pride are often, they often delay our decisions to use AIDS. And this denial and pride can often make us almost housebound, which isn't a good thing for one's mental health. Believe me, I, I'm sure I don't have to tell you guys this, but it's so much better to venture outside for an hour or two um, using a power chair or a scooter or any other aid and enjoy some fresh air or lovely countryside than to sit at home and to stay at home in your, in your chair because mobility is a struggle. I love it when I see members discover this for themselves and they, they nearly always say, I wish I'd done this years ago. Um, I've, I've, I've actually witnessed this um, where I've lent people equipment and seen joy in faces and it's, um, and, and on occasions it's been somebody who said, I don't need a wheelchair. You lend them one or a scooter and seeing the pleasure in their face when they go out in the countryside is incredible. So please try not to let denial, pride or finances delay the decision to use mobility aids. It's usually a life-changing decision and remember, uh, the HSP group can, can possibly help with finances. Um, this might be a, a surprise one. Uh, the first aid I wanted to talk about is FES. Um, please don't ask me any technical questions on this slide. Um, I've got I've got a good re <laughs> a good relationship with the FES people at Salisbury Hospital. Um, I was one of their customers, patients, for about 12 years. Um, I personally think um, that for me, FE FES was brilliant in my earlier stages of HSP when I was still quite mobile. Um, it stopped, stopped me drag, stopped my toes dragging, stopped me tripping over. Um, and in the days when I could walk, say a quarter of a mile it, it made me easily be able to walk a mile and, and nobody was a bigger fan of fes than me um it's something i think that you have to try um i think the best way in my experience in the group um i've known a lot of people have tried fes and i would say five percent of them don't don't rate it at all 90 percent of them thought it thought it was okay and quite or quite good but five percent of them found it life-changing and, and for that reason alone i think if you get the opportunity to try it it's worth trying um let's just see if this video walks works this is a guy who hasn't got hsp um and this is walking without FES. Look at his um, his left foot, right as you look at it, dragging, toe dragging on the ground. It, this shows exactly what it did to me. See, it's a huge difference. So it's not the most obvious mobility aid, but it's it can be a brilliant mobility aid. Um, some people don't like the sensation of it. It's like pins and needles. Um, most people get used to that. Um, but if it's of interest, um, we, we can talk about it afterwards, um, but odd stock medical other people, uh, to contact. Okay. I have to stop the video, I think. Yeah. So a simple walking stick. Um, is often the first mo physical mobility aid that is required. There are all sorts of types. Um, some people just use canes. Um, I love the colourful ones. I've, I've heard lots of our, it's more often a, a female member, and they said, if I've got to have a walking stick, I'm going to have a stylish one, I'm going to have a colourful one. Uh, and um, I'm a big fan of them. I like, sh I like us showing our character, personality in, in, in the sticks we use um, or, or in any equipment we use. The middle three there um, have all got the flexi foot ferrule on. Um, flexi foot, the, it, it's, I, I can't say to everyone 
you, you must have this feral or you must have this piece of equipment because we're we're all different and i know one member who doesn't like flexi foot ferals um but everyone else i've ever spoken to swears by them um if you've never used a flexi foot feral or experienced or, or heard of one it's it's worth looking into um later on in the presentation i've got loads of links and you can copy down the the link for the flexi foot or anything else you come across um but they're brilliant they they're, the grip they offer um and they're the way they cope with rugged ground it is exceptional oh there's another pink one at the end there yeah just just showing you stick and match your character um one stick or two some of you might know this guy he's one of our members um let me see if let's check. We had to go down to the pub to do this, of course. So that was, um, let's call him Brian. <laughs> and that was Brian walking with one stick. Um, I'll try and play them both at the same time and it's um, in a minute. I think it's good to Good to watch the shoulders if you compare the shoulders now i asked brian to do this it's it's, it's not the, the difference isn't as clear as i hoped it would be when i when i first lent brian a pair of crutches everyone there went wow because the improvement in his walking uh was exceptional but the, the reason I've showed you that is I've seen people who you just use one stick um, and they can cause other problems, um, hip problems, back problems, um, ankle problems, all sorts of problems, um, just just because of the, um, you know, the strain on their body leaning onto one stick. So yeah, please consider that and, um, and, and maybe speak to a professional about that as well. I notice we've got a physiotherapist here um so maybe um maybe she can comment on this later as well um so a pair of sticks may be better than one um within the group crutches and rambling poles uh seem very popular i mentioned flexi foot ferals good there's a good um picture of one there that shows exactly how they cope with um with, with terrain they, they are very good Um, some people go on to use a relator um, after sticks. Some people use both. There's no correct order in mobility aids. You don't start with a stick and then use a relator and then use a, a scooter. We're all different. We've all got different requirements. Uh, so, yeah, some people use both sticks and relators, and they let the circumstances decide which they choose. Others start with sticks and then use relators. There's no right or wrong. We're all different. I personally use crutches, rollators, wheelchairs, and scooters. Uh, Mobility Smart and Careco are two of many good suppliers. And remember, for any equipment, we can help with the cost. I think at the moment the group offer, um, I think it's a thousand pounds towards your mobility equipment. Um, That's right. Yeah, which and I've put the price of one of these. Um, um, a second one along, 89.95. Um, you can pay up to sort of five or six hundred pounds, even more for a row later. Um, most of them incorporate a seat. I personally prefer four wheeled relators for stability and safety, and they range in price from about 50 pounds to several hundred pounds. Um, image four is a top row relator, which is my personal favorite, and these are around 400 pounds. Um, I prefer relators where the walker, where the user is walking between the rear wheels. Um, and you can clearly see how that would apply in, in image four, um, as opposed to something you just push in front of you where you tend to be leaning forward into it. Um, it's more stable, it's safer. Um, yeah, as I say, they all, they all tend to come with a seat um, and uh, yeah, you get three three wheels or four wheels. Again, I prefer four wheels just for stability. 
Uh, moving on to mobility scooters. Um, purchasing a mobility scooter is a big, practical, important step not to be taken lightly, and it's very important to get it right. Um, the correct choice can make such a positive difference to life. Spend plenty of time doing your research and learn from fellow members, speak to them, um, speak to your friends about different types of scooter and make sure you select the correct one to, to, to suit your own requirements. There are small folding scooters that are ideal for travel. Just press a button and the scooter folds itself up. A strong, able-bodied person could lift this item into the boot of a car, but but they, although they look, although they look light, be warned, they are still quite heavy. There are pavement scooters ideal for shopping, or simply a walk with the family and friends. Uh, the, the frames of these pavement scooters disassemble into into individual parts for storage and transportation. Hoists are usually required to lift these into the back of a large car. In fact, I would say for, for, for most HSPs, hoists are usually required to lift any scooter into the back of your car. Um, there are other gadgets available. Um, I think Mike Horseman might tell us something about this later. Uh, um, another way of getting this kind of vehicle into your boot. I think it's like a, a, a raising platform or something something similar to that. Road legal scooters are also available. These can be driven on roads at eight miles an hour or pavements at four miles an hour. Uh, it's a legal requirement actually on a pavement that you're not allowed to go more than four miles an hour. And they usually have a switch on, um, which limits you to four miles an hour. They're large and comfortable. They have lights and indicators. And some of these are even designed for off-road use. They are, they are exceptionally heavy and will not fit in the boot of a car. Uh, so before you purchase a scooter, ensure you know what your requirements are, and then you'll get it right. So we'll start with small scooters. Um, when I took these pictures, he, he said he didn't want me to get the, 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 the prices in. I noticed on the left, you can clearly see the price. So I'll apologize to Careco for that one, which is where I took these pictures. Um, but the one on the left, um, it folds at the press of the button. Uh, but it, as I said earlier, it looks like you could just lift that up and put it in the boot of your car. Um, you could if you were married to Arnold Schwarzenegger, but most of us would struggle. Um, and I think most people would, would still need a hoist. They're ideal for travel, shopping, and enjoyable days out. Um, I've known a couple of members um, I don't think John Mason's here, our, our treasurer. He he had two or three of these. Um, he's done a bit of a journey on these, and 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 tended to find that they didn't do the range that he wanted to, them to. I, you know, I don't. It, it's tricky to find something like this that will do more than ten miles, and and he, and even that kind of distance is. Um, I think you know these are ideal for arriving at the shopping center, getting out of the car by whatever means um, you use, strong husband or hoist, and, and going around the local shops. But I don't think they're good for doing long distances. Road scooters, um, much, much bigger. Um, the, the big one in the middle there is exactly what I've got. Um, and I absolutely love it. Um, they, tend, they do tend to have a good range. Yeah, that silver one, which is a, a TGA scooter um, with new batteries. Um, and if you look after it, it's got a range of about 30 miles. Um, and I've often done, I often do well over 10 miles on it. In fact, we've just had the Potato Pants Festival and I, and I drove to the, to the Potato Pants site, which is two miles from my house, spent the whole day on the scooter and, um, and then drove home at, at sort of midnight on it, and, and I did a lot of miles. Um, what I said earlier about, you know, don't sit at home, uh, go out and have some fun. I, I use this when I'm having, when I'm having a bad day, um, you know, one of these days where you've got no energy, where it is so easy to sit at home. I'll get myself out to my garage, I'll, excuse my phone ringing, I'll, 
I'll get on that scooter and I'll do a couple of miles. And it doesn't matter how tired you are. They are so easy to, to, to drive and, and enjoy the fresh air in countryside. But the red one there, different make, different model, there's best choice. But they are quite expensive. Um, practical and fun, you know, you can, uh, there's, there's some, the middle one looks like a motorbike. Um, one on the left there um, protects you from the weather. Um, and I just thought I'd throw in my wife test driving mine as well on, on the right. Freedom as well. Um, Andy Barrett there, um, one of our West Country members, he's using a tramper, which is, um, uh, it's what countryside mobility use at, uh, at country parks all around the country. If you, if you join countryside mobility, um, and I think it's 10 pounds a year, there's many sites you can go to and, and you can hire one of these trampers. They'll usually charge you two pounds or something like that. And you can do exactly what Andy's doing there or go around a national trust house or something. Um, yeah, so that's well worth looking into. Um, the one on the right there, I just put in for fun. I mean, electric uh, mobility scooters can be cool. <laughs> Before we shift off of scooters, Mike asks the question, how often do your batteries need charging or changing? Have you got any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, good question, Mike. It, it, it depends on the scooter. There's different types of batteries, but, but all of them like to be used. Um, I've known many people who've had a scooter, but for whatever reason, they haven't used it for several months. Um, and, and then they find it no longer does for 10 miles it did when they bought it. It only does three miles. Um, uh, my scooter, the one I just said that, let's go, let's go back. Uh, the one on the right there, um, new, that does 30 miles. Um, I, I never leave it for more than three or four weeks without giving it a, a, a charge. Um, you've just got to keep charging the batteries. Just don't, especially in the winter, don't leave, don't leave them in a in a cold environment for a long time. Um, if you look after the batteries, they last. Where were we? So moving on to wheelchairs. Um, a wheelchair can provide you with far greater independence and mobility. However, choosing the right wheelchair can be a daunting experience with so many options available. It can be very hard to know where to start. The first thing you've got to do is determine your needs. The first step in choosing the right wheelchair um, is to determine those needs and consider the following questions. Uh, what activities will be using the wheelchair for? How often will you use the wheelchair? Is it for indoor or outdoor use or both? And do you have any physical limitations or special requirements? Uh, for instance, does your HSP affect your upper body and particularly your arms? Um, I know a lot of people with SPG4, which is the, um, Adam, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the most common type of HSP. And I can think of half a dozen members, um, I could name them, who, like me, are lucky enough to have strong arms. Um, and so we, 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 we use wheelchairs independently, you know, no, nobody pushing them. And that's the last consideration. Will you, will you be independent or assisted? Uh, consider your lifestyle. Uh, your lifestyle will lifestyle will play a role in determining the, the, the right type of wheelchair for you. For example, if you're an active person who enjoys sports or outdoor activities, you may want a lightweight and maneuverable wheelchair. If you spend a lot of time sitting in the wheelchair, you may win, you may want a chair with special cushioning and support. And think about your environment. Uh, consider the, the environment in which you'll be using your chair. If you'll be using the chair primarily indoors, you may want a chair with a smaller turning radius and a narrow width and low enough to enable you to sit a, at a standard dining table. If you'll be using the chair outdoors, you may want a chair with larger wheels and suitable tires, maybe with puncture resistance or even solid puncture proof tires. Uh, Choose the right type of wheelchair. There's several types of wheelchairs available to choose from, each with its own advantages and disadvantages. 
And here's a few, a few options. There'll be some pictures of these in a minute. There's transit wheelchairs, and these are designed to be pushed by a carer or assistance. And they're, used, they're usually used for very short-term or occasional use, um, such as a medical appointment or an outing, or just getting someone from a chair to a bathroom. Um, they've usually got four smaller wheels on, actually. But again, you'll see in the pictures in a minute. Manual wheelchairs. These wheelchairs are propelled by either the user or by an assistant pushing the handles. They're usually more affordable than an more affordable than an active wheelchair or a power chair, but they can be difficult to maneuver on inclines or over long distances. They usually have the capacity to fold for storage or transportation purposes. The next one is active wheelchairs. Um, it's what I'm sat in now. These wheelchairs are designed to be considerably more lightweight and maneuverable than traditional manual wheelchairs. The frame is rigid, so it doesn't fold. Um, and it's often manufactured using aluminium or even carbon fiber for strength and lightness. Uh, they're, more, they're, they're more costly than ordinary manual wheelchairs and are used by active individuals. And interesting, interestingly, most people with a spinal injury choose this type of chair. And these are people who spend their, you know, every hour of every day in a wheelchair. And then there's power wheelchairs. These wheelchairs are powered by an electric motor and controlled by a joystick. They're more expensive than manual wheelchairs, but they're easier to maneuver and, and can be more comfortable for long-term use. It's very important you get the right size and fit um, for comfort and safety. A wheelchair that is too big or too small can cause discomfort and even injury. Work with a professional to ensure that your wheelchair is the right size for your body and your needs. Uh, wheelchair services um, through the NHS is actually a very good place to start. And consider ac accessories as well. Fi consider any accessories or add-ons that may be helpful. Um, this could include things like a cushion, anti-tipping devices, which are very important, or a tray or a bag for carrying items. In conclusion, choosing the right wheelchair can be a daunting task, but by considering your needs, lifestyle, environment, and the type of wheelchair that's right for you and your HSP, you can find a chair that meets your needs and, that, and allows you to live your life to the fullest. Unfortunately, a wheelchair is often seen as a very negative item. And I think this, this might simply be because it's the symbol of disability. Um, please try to see this differently. My wheelchair is my best friend. The freedom and independence that it gives me has totally changed my life. And I know others who would say the same thing as well. So we started on the transit wheelchairs. These are, you know, they're often used just for getting somebody um, from a chair to a bathroom or, or to, to take them to a hospital appointment or, or something like that. They're not for long-term use, more for occasional use. Uh, manual wheelchairs, um, they, Believe it or not, they all have push handles. The, the two on the right, you can see the push handles, but they're folded down. Um, they, um, all three of these are folding manual wheelchairs. So they, when they fold, they're much narrower than that. Most of you have seen how these work. Um, they vary in price quite significantly. Um, and I've just given you an idea of, of price there. Um, yeah, they, they sort of, the one on the right is sort of crossing over into being an active wheelchair because of its, its lightness. Um, active wheelchairs, as I say, in fact, the middle one is exactly what I'm, I'm sat in now. They are much lighter. They tend to be more, more expensive. Most people think because they don't fold, they're unsuitable because they don't go in the car so well. Um, that's actually not true. When, when you, the wheels come off at a press of a button, um, on some of them, the back folds flat down on the seat and they take up very little room in a car. And, and how many people, I've done it myself, when you're playing around with a folding wheelchair, you get your thumb trapped and you end up with a black fingernail. Um, 
that certainly doesn't happen with with these. Um, yeah, I, I as I, as I said in the previous slide, I love mine, and I can do miles on it as well. And they're they're so maneuverable and lightweight. As I said earlier, wheelchair services as well is a good place to go to to you know for 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 further advice. You can have powered add-ons to a wheelchair. Um, powered wheelchair attachments have revolutionized the way wheelchair users move around. These motorized wheelchair attachments allow people to gain increased independence and control over their movements. The added front wheel raises your casters up off the ground so you can pass much more easily over all types of terrain. They make your wheelchair more versatile and practical to and practical to improve your independence and quality of life. Uh, the three most common types of these I've shown here, um, Firefly, and I know you, you'll see in a minute, I know there's three or four members of our members who I know who use the Firefly and they all love it. Um, Tri Ride, the middle one, very similar to the Firefly and Batek on the right um, is a little bit bigger actually. And I know one, one of our members has got one of them. Um, and I've got other other friends who use the Batek. Uh, they go up to about 20 miles an hour. Uh, they can be good fun as well. And and battery, uh, Mike mentioned that batteries the same. You've got to look after them. But these tend to have a very, very good range as well. They just unclip. So um, you've got an active wheelchair there and which you can use just as a wheelchair for most of the time. And you just clip this accessory on there um, when you need it, you know, to, 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 to go on longer journeys or rough terrain or, or, or for whatever reason that you're using. It. Just took just took this one, um, added this slide recently. This was at Potato Pants Festival only last weekend. Uh, that's me on the left on, on my scooter, uh, but it shows two of our members in the middle both using a firefly. I'm sorry that the photographer chopped the front wheel off them. Um, and there's Brian, who, who was the guy walking on one or two sticks earlier, um, just using his active wheelchair. Um, but it, I like it because it just shows us out having fun at a music festival and mobility is not a problem. Uh, the last type of wheelchair is the power chair. Um, there's folding power chairs that are lighter than a fixed based power chair, but tend to be just as comfortable. Folding power chairs are all about quick, clever and convenient storage. Uh, a fixed based power chair, these can often be dismantled into manageable parts for storage and transportation. Um, I've just given, a, given you a few examples of them there. Um, I'd like to just draw your attention to the, to the one with the arrow on. Um, because a couple of our members absolutely, I know they love this chair. Um, uh, and what, you'll see it's, it's, it's actually on the front of the newsletter. Uh, Jacqueline, who lives in Scotland, has got this chair. And she sent me the picture uh, top right as well. Um, um, although it's folding, don't make the mistake uh, that you can lift it into a car. She, 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 she hoists it into the car. The picture on the top right shows her hoist, but she's already saying that this has changed her life. Um, and I read her article in front of the newsletter. I think she'd be the first person to say that she'd, she'd left this decision too long. You know, she's suddenly going out and and enjoying the countryside and doing miles. Yeah, there's a few, um, three other examples there. Um, the one, on, the, the one on the left, actually, interesting, it's, in, it's only 13 kilograms in weight, but um, it looks to me like it's for, for indoor use only. I just wanted to add this one as well. This is a, a, a very interesting device from TJ. It's a, it, it's a cross between a mobility scooter and a power chair. Um, it's called a Scoozy. It's got a maximum speed of eight miles an hour and a range of up to 60 miles. Um, and that's not a joke, depends on which battery you choose when you buy it. If you go for the 60 miles option, I think it's considerably more expensive, but the, the other one does 30 miles. 
Um, driving comfort comes from advanced suspension, 16 inch wheels and a fully supported seat. Um, the armrests open. Um, that improves access for getting, you know, getting on and off it. And um, yeah, a simple display always shows your range and other useful information. It's joystick steering, it's simple and effortless to use. Um, so you can just sit back comfortably and enjoy your journey. But yeah, it's, a, it's just an interesting one, I thought. Uh, as I said earlier, people think it's uh, negative. Um, I know my wife might look a bit negative in that picture on the left, but I'm certainly having fun. And um, yeah, and, and that's me and Lily Rice on the right. Um, I love Lily. I, I, you probably don't all know this, but Lily um, was the women's world champion in wheelchair motocross. She was the first lady in Europe to, to land. I'm not suggesting any of you do this. She was the first lady in Europe to land a backward somersault in a wheelchair. Um, but what I love about Lily is she makes it cool. Um, look at her there in a pink wheelchair. Um, all her friends at school don't think of Lily as the poor disabled child in the class. She's one cool dude, you know. Uh, she's 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 actually um, concentrating more on swimming now, I think. And she's um, she's won medals in the in the Paralympics. Uh, I think she got a bronze for Wales in the Paralympics. Um, yeah, in incredible person. Uh, you'll notice that in you know these wheelchairs are manoeuvrable. If you just just out of interest, look at these pictures. In, in none of them are the front wheels are on the ground. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I said earlier, please fight that pride. Whether it's a stick, a pair of crutches, a wheelchair, a power chair, or a mobility scooter that you need, don't let your pride or denial prevent you from going out and about and living your life to the full. Taking this step can be life-changing. And, you know, it's just a couple of pictures of me out about enjoying myself um my we, we we were talking about grand uh, grandchildren that's my grandchild in loving my mobility scooter the two little pictures at the top there um yeah it it, it, it really can be life-changing and i love it when people discover that i've got a few useful links here um i'll put this don't don't scribble them down there we'll probably put it up um again in a, in a bit but it, there are many, many, many places you can go. My advice would be just Google whatever you're interested in. But these are, these are all sites that I found very useful, some of them particularly so. Um, and it might be worth making a note of some of them later. Um, so thank you. Um, thank you for putting up with me. Any questions? Um, I'm, happy. I'm happy to discuss any of this offline as well. Um, and there's my contact details. Thank you. Ian, that's brilliant. Thank you very much indeed.